recording. Oh, okay, <laughs> that, that's good. Um, so when I say image-based resources, um, it's probably mostly photographic, but you'll also have a lot of kind of prints and illustrations as well. Um, photos, uh, so photography um, starts around the sort of 1820s, but doesn't really, you, you don't really see it in, in Glasgow uh, context till sort of the 1850s or so, it starts kind of coming in. Um, and, you know, it's still black and white at that point. Colour photography is actually uh, a lot older maybe than people realise. So you get first colour photographs in the 1860s, I think, but generally they're, they're hugely expensive. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a very niche uh, kind of thing, really, until much later. Um, and what I also, yeah, you'll get uh, prints, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then for the next session, we'll look a little bit more at sort of um, documentary sources. We'll have gone maps, images, and documents. We'll do them in three chunks, kind of thing. Sorry, sorry, Ingrid. See, see, was it last time you, you were giving us a, a, a... Oh, the, the email, the, the thing to look on? The yeah, email, I can... Is that right? I so well I pass I pass stuff on to Karen and then she passes it on to you. So <clears throat> so I uploaded the video and I can get her to send the link to you again if you've not got it. Um, yeah. Or if uh, you want please. to wait. No, because I, I got the link. I got yeah. the link for it for the video. But didn't it take you the email? Didn't no? No, it takes just... you to YouTube. Yeah. Um, you click the link, it takes you to YouTube yeah. and then the video plays. Yeah. So you would have got an have email. Just Karen. Yeah, you, you would have got the email from Karen um, and then you click on the link and it takes you to, to the YouTube video. But Yeah, um, I thought you were going to, I thought, oh, I maybe I was wrong, sorry, yeah. I thought you so, were going to use something that you can look on. Yeah. No, that that that's it. It was just when we recorded the session. Yeah, that's it's just a recording of the session, but it's been uploaded to you. All right, right, you. that's fine. Yeah, sorry. But I'll um once we've done the document session next week, I'll pull everything in together into one document and then you'll have it all as a winner. Um and I'll pass that on again by a Karen. So yeah, that's fine. right, let's see. Oh, just share that and view slideshow. Okay, oh, Jinx, come on. Right, okay. So uh, we've been through this. Um, one thing I wanted to say, because um, we didn't really need to worry about it too much when we were looking at the map-based stuff, um, databases are quite dull, um, but they're very, very important in terms of um, helping you search and find things and kind of understanding what's sitting behind the, you know, the websites that we're looking at. So um, <clears throat> when you're searching for information, think really carefully about the keywords. So the words that you're typing into your search box, whether that's into, into Google or if you're on a site like, uh, like Scran, for instance, we'll have a look at that in a minute. Think carefully about the keywords that you're using because that's um, really critical in terms of helping you find what you're looking for. So think about maybe alternative spellings. Uh, it might be there are errors made by humans because um, all that information had to be inputted at some point. Um, uh -huh. And you always get a bit of driver error, you know, um, people misspelling things that that can sometimes happen. They try and get rid of as much of that as possible, particularly if you're doing things like family history research and, or you're looking for, for people's names. Um, you can get, uh, yeah, spelling errors. You can also, if you think about, um, you're looking for somebody called Agnes MacDonald, who's your great, great, great auntie, and you're typing in MacDonald, um, she might be a McDonald. She might even appear as a Mick and a McDonald. That often happens as well. Um, mm. So kind of keep your options open. 
um, and think really carefully about what you're you're searching for. You'll get. Um, I'm trying to think of an example of like. Uh, We're going to be looking for a McDonald's, no? Sorry. Is that just is that just for an example, McDonald's? Yeah, that's that's just an yeah. example, you know, because obviously Mac sir or Mac or Mick surnames are really common in Scotland. So yeah, that's just an, an example of uh, a way that you uh, you know or a potential obstacle that you might encounter. Um, it tends to be in sort of family history, you know, genealogy kind of stuff. But just be aware that um, even though you're searching a database and it's all computerized and it's all online. It all comes, it, it, it all originates from uh, from somebody doing data entry or looking at old documents, for instance, and copying them then into a database so that people can search for stuff and you'll inevitably end up with, you know, errors and things within that. So just being aware of that. Uh, and, you know, if you're actually in an archives or a museum or a library, um, remember the staff are always there to help. Um, and they're generally, they're, they're generally very good. Or, you know, you can email places like the Mitchell Library as well for, uh, for assistance. So don't, don't be afraid to ask. They're, that's, that's what they're there to do. Um, and they're generally very helpful and very um, keen to help. So, um, yep, we've covered <laughs> off um, National Library of Scotland map site. We had a look at past map, and today we're going to look at Canmore, Scran, Glasgow Story, and the Virtual Mitchell. Um, and yeah, I'll just skip through that because you've seen that already. Past map, and uh, yeah, been through all that already. Sorry. We did have a little bit, a bit of a look at some of the complementary sources to the maps, so the statistical accounts and the Ordnance Survey name books, and we'll come back to them again next week when we're talking about documents. So here's Scran. Um, so Scran was developed in early 2000s. It looks a little bit dated now, to be honest, but it's a great resource. Um, and it's got, I think, just under half a million images and movies and sounds from um, over 300 museums, galleries uh, and archives in Scotland. Um, so it's an aggregator site. It's, it's pulling from lots of local and regional kind of and national um, sources. So it's really good as a starting point. It saves you going to all those kind of individual sites and you'll find some really interest, interesting stuff in there. Um, you going now? Sorry? Can we go on that? Yeah, we'll go on it in a minute. I'll just rattle through this really quickly and then we'll jump on. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, no, it's all right. Um, and now with Scran, <clears throat> you can, uh, if you go to like a library or an archives, they have a free subscription <clears throat> service, so you don't need to pay for it. Um, I'll show you when we're actually on the site, but uh, you can you can search and you can see kind of smaller versions of the images that you're looking for. But if you want the better quality versions, uh, it's a paid for service. You can get it free in Whoa. libraries or like universities, colleges, all that kind of stuff. They have uh, they usually have like a, a corporate um, subscription service. I my old university. Um, Login still works. So if you want to write that down, um, uh, you're welcome to use it because for some reason they've forgotten that I don't work there anymore and they've not cancelled my service. So, um, so I, yeah. Wait a minute, where, where, where to put that? Uh, and do you to put notes? Uh, or I can, I can say, I can email it to you if you want. Um, yeah, please, please. Yeah, okay. I'll, yeah, I'll show you if you if you wanted to scribble it down. It's UG1A, and the password is Dental31. Don't ask me why it's that. I was just assigned that login years ago, and for some reason they've not cancelled it. So, um, yeah, I'll just fire it out. Um, now Canmore is another biggie. That's another big kind of national uh, collection. 
And remember when we looked at past math the other week there? Ah, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So um, it's it's drawn from the same source. It's the same big database that's sitting behind this service. But past map has got a kind of front uh, front end that is map based. Um, so that's your way. That's one way in to the same data set. Canmore is a different route in, um, and I'll I'll show you what that entails. So past map's really good um, for finding information if it's a place that you're interested in, you know, wherever around about where you live, or if you're on holiday and you're like, oh, I wonder what that thing over there is. You'd use past map. Uh -huh. Whereas Canmore is maybe more if you're interested in a particular um, type of of site, say you're really interested in castles or or a particular period or or whatever, then you'd come in from that direction. Right. So and that's the front there. So and uh, I'm not going to talk too much about the National Collection of Aerial Photography because that is another paid for service and we'll talk about it next week. Because um, I've tried to keep things, uh, I've tried to introduce you to um, the resources that are free, and stuff you don't have to pay for. Anyway, um, I am going to come, <coughs> oops, I'm going to come out of this and we'll have a look at Right, let's start with Canmore. Okay, can you see that site there? Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> so, um, as I said, it's, um, it's run by Historic Environment Scotland and sitting behind this kind of lovely website here um, are all these databases for known historic and archeological sites, um, listed buildings, scheduled monuments, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so you can, and you can, you can create a login, but you don't need to, um, you can just use it. So let's have a look at search first. Okay. Um, and you can just use the quick search up here. So um, trying to think, uh, give me something to search on. Um, Oh, I'm trying to think. What about a uh, lighthouse? Anybody yeah. in interested in lighthouses? Okay, so I could just type in lighthouse here up the top. This is the simple search, and I'll just. Oh, it's going to be really slow now. And you can see that's given me quite a lot of returns. I've had. Uh, there's 2,980 images of lighthouses. Oh. Yeah. You think, and well, oh, wow. that's a bit much. <laughs> so, um, and it looks as like though somebody's been using a drone. Yeah. Well, they, they, ah. oh, oh, they have, they have helicopters and they have planes. Um, they, they have a small plane that they, um, that they hire. Uh, for their photographers, and they go out and they take aerial photos on a regular basis. So the the Google Google Maps, but with planes. Yeah, and they're taking they're usually taking them at an angle. They're called the bleak shots. Um, uh -huh. So there's all your images up the top there. Um, uh -huh. it, there's a little tab here that says sites. So that relates to. So you can see it says there's 2,980 images and there are 905 sites. That means a, a, a site is re relating to one individual lighthouse, uh, but it might have 10 photographs associated with it or whatever. Um, and then you've got collections there, which will tell you whenever it eventually decides to do what it's going to do. Oh, things. Um, oh, sorry, my phone going. Um, and then uh, collections are um, so not just not just images. So in Canmore, you'll have a lot of photographs, um, but you'll also have some documents, um, maybe some illustrations. Also holds a lot of archaeological records. 
so um, plans and drawings and things, architectural plans and drawings. Um, and you can get in if you know, if somebody's put a collection in, so say, um, say I submit a collection, the archive for the West Boathouse project, um, that would be given a number and it would be West Boathouse collection and it would have maybe a bunch of elevations, some plans, etc. You know, and it would appear like that. So that's that's your returns from a simple search. That's just me looking for lighthouses. So let's have a look at uh, in here. So what we used there was just a key keyword um, site. Something that's kind of useful, and you will find on on some sites, is um, classification. And this is a really useful way of, of getting around some of those sort of typos and things. So if I start typing lighthouse in here, see how it starts? Oh, there'll be a little drop down here. Um, so did you see all that popping up there? Uh -huh. So those are, those are like set <laughs> terms for what's in their database. So if I wasn't sure if it was like lighthouse or lighthouse, is it all one word? Um, that's quite handy because that's the term that they like to use. Uh, wow. Let's see how many, should we have a look at lighthouse keepers houses? Um, and I can refine it again. I can say that, um, well, I could put in uh, an NGR, that's a national grid reference. So if I wanted to, to find lighthouse keepers houses in Orkney within a 200 meter radius, I could do it that way. Um, or if I want to find lighthouse keepers houses, I, I might just put Orkney in here and see what comes up. And there we go. I've got three in there. So if I click through now to that record, I get a nice little map showing where it is. Uh, it tells me a bit about the site. Um, so the name of it is Muckle Scary Lighthouses and Keepers Cottages. Um, any kind of alternative names. This here, permalink, um, if I open that up, that's the full record for the site. So not just that image. You can see all the other images that are associated with it. Same site, tells you a little bit more about it. And there's a, a little description of it. Um, and that, remember, I, yeah, if I was on past map, that's the record that I would be taken to when I click on the, on the little point. On oh, the right. uh -huh. Uh -huh. So it's the same source, but it's slightly different uh -huh. reading. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yep. So now say I wanted that image. Um, so I'm gonna click the little information button. Now, when I click buy it, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that I need to spend money. <laughs> It's just been popped in my basket and I can download a um, kind of low res, low resolution version. Um, oh, here. I, can that... actually, I can actually buy it um, uh, and you can buy images from Canmore. They're usually about £10. So if it's somewhere, I don't know, somewhere that's it's really an old in... work account, it's not going to cost you. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> not for this site. Not for this site. Or yeah, no, it, I, I don't know. Site? That would be. Ah, a, right. Yeah, sadly <laughs> not. Yeah. Um. Anyway, yeah. So if I if I download, then I can get. It's a you know it's a reasonable quality image. It's fine That's for tough. doing for doing your own kind of research and stuff. It's a bit of a faff because you've then got to download it here. Um, and that'll just take you, uh, so it'll just download it to your desktop. So you can get images from this site. They're not really high quality, but they're good for, you know, if you're doing bits and bobs. Well, I think that's all right. Yeah, yeah. 
so that's that's quite good. Um, so that is Canmore, and uh, da, 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 da. yeah. So oh, I'm going back to maybe search map as well. So it does also have a map layer just to really confuse you. <laughs> um, they keep adding stuff to this site, so I don't know if I've actually looked at this one already. Um, so this isn't as, it's not as easy to use as past map, but it's kind of, it's kind of similar. If I zoom in well, here. Aye, aye. Um, and actually they've combined aerial mm. photos. Um, yeah, they've got a lot of stuff in here, like, so, oh my God. Uh, okay, so I'm here in Rutherglen. Um, and you can see, let's, let's have a look. So I'll click on that point there just for fun. Uh, and that might not have an image associated with it. Um, just says it's a structure. Okay, that's just a wee building. There'll be other stuff in there. So you can also search by map um, in Canmore as well. I tend to use past map as a starting point, but. Uh, but you can you can get stuff in here too. Okay, so um, any questions on Canmore? Well, I'm quite happy. Yes, that all seemed reasonably straightforward. So does that have all the historical maps as well? No, you would use the NLS maps for that. Right. Although it I, says... I didn't know if there was a, a crossover between the two. Yeah, there is a little bit. The So if I click here, I think it just shows you the base map. Yeah, um, that's right. So you, well, can, you can flip between some of the historic maps. Um, I guess just if you're looking for things, I'm not quite sure um, that's useful or not. Um, but yeah, if you're looking for historic maps, you go straight to the NLS maps. It's just the best. There's, yeah. Well, I, I can see from the selection thing that it's what 1843 yeah you can get those but um it's yeah. really just being in this instance it's really just being used as a base for that uh, you know for their other information for the the information about sites yeah um yeah so it is it is useful from that perspective uh right Okay, I wonder if there's anything else. I think, again, all these sites, just go and play with them. Um, just go and see, see what you can find. So Canmore and Past Map tend to be better for, uh, you know, if you're interested in archaeology or, you know, kind of historic sites, historic buildings, then that's kind of where you would go. Um, Scran is probably more for kind of social history because it's kind of photographs and, um, and early illustrations and stuff. That tends to be the skew there. It's more like archives and museums rather than, or more archives rather than museums. So I'm gonna use, uh, well, actually I'll do a quick search without logging in first and then you can see kind of um, how that works. So I'm gonna type Lighthouse again because I have no imagination today. Um, so this would be like the free version we're having a look at. Right. So, oh, here's somebody at Heinish, by the looks of it. So you get to see like a little thumbnail of oh, what's sure available. Thought. So it, it tells you what's there, which is fine, but actually you wanna get, you wanna be able to get at the meat of it. So we're gonna log in. And yeah, remember you can get this free in libraries too, but um, when I log in here, I can see a bigger version. Oh, you, yeah. you, you get a lot of information there. So photograph of the lighthouse keeper, blah, 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 at Lighthouse. And then if I scroll down, it tells you all the who, what, where's and when's. So who to get, who Colin McPherson, 
what's it what's it of where was it taken when was it taken um and then a lot of information on um where it's come from so who has copyright if you imagine uh you've got whatever almost half a million different photos and images in this one place and they've come from loads of different archives and museums um they have different uh, copyright associated with them because they're coming from different collections. So in most cases, if you see something on that site that you really like and you want a good quality copy of it, um, you can put an order in um, and then they'll advise you on what the, what the issues are with any copyright. Say you wanted to reproduce something. If I was... Um, so I've just gone through all this with um, making a film about Dalmarnock um, and you have to get oh, permission right. to get permission to use certain images and that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, it can be a bit of a faff, but actually Scran's quite handy that way because again, it's like, it's like a one-stop shop yeah. kind of thing. So <clears throat> anyway, let's go back and have again a wee look at the search options. So you can see again, there's like a simple search and you can just put in whatever you, just a keyword search in there, or if you go advanced, then, you know, if you know that you're only interested in audio clips or video clips. Um, so if I look for a, a video clip, for instance, and I'll, I'll just search for Glasgow videos, See what comes up. Yeah. And there we've got the what's that? Looks like rugby, HMS Glasgow. School Ooh. of Art. School of Art, there's Beatle Mania. Let's go. That's an that. Acropolis. Right. Okay. So here's a clip of the Beatles, for instance. Um and that's come from uh, the Scottish TV Film and Video Archive Project. So if I click on that, and um, yeah, it should play. No sound, lots of excited people. Well, they go to the concert. Looks like it, yeah. Ah. Okay, so you get, you know, it's not just empty. Oh, yeah. Ah. <laughs> There's, there's a happy punter. <laughs> so, yeah, you've got videos there. Um, we'll go back to the search again and um, trying to think. I always uh, give me something to search on. Um, anybody got any ideas? Uh, how do you feel low? I don't know. How do feel low? I'll be in there for sure. Yep, there you go. Wow. Uh, yep. So there's a nice photo there. Some of the rowing boats out. The boats I remember the boats. Yeah. I know they're cracking. Okay. So um if you click again on this image here, you can get it again. That's quite big. That's that's nice no, enough just to, to kind of use there. Um, and you can also, oh if you've got, once you've got a login, um, you can create your own kind of albums and stuff and start saving things. So if I, if I really like this image and I want to remember it, then I can save it oh, uh, right. to, to a scrapbook or an album because um, oh. I have one set up already. Oh. Oh. Anyway. So I'll save that to my scrapbook and then I can keep, keep browsing and go back again. Um, and uh, the other thing just to point out on the site, because how is it suddenly 22? That's insane. Um, Hello? Because Scran was set up um, as an educational resource, they also have these little kind of packs of information like Pathfinder packs, for instance. So if, if you're a teacher or you, there's something that you particularly want to learn about, 
um, then you can open these up. Uh, so, okay, there's one on Scottish local history, for instance. And I can then go in and have a look at Glasgow. Oh, aye. And they've got a load of different, so they've pulled from their own collections. Um, so if I was really interested in finding out um, about the International Exhibition in 1901, um, they've got, they've kind of picked out some of those kind of key, key bits that they've got. So that's worth having a wee nosy at as well. There's tons of stuff in there. Um, or, uh, da, 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 or subjects as well, you can get in that way. Yeah, you'll disappear down another oh, road. Oh, die. Road, this is I'm afraid. Okay, so that's Scran. We'll have a quick look now at the Glasgow story. Have, has anybody used that site before? No. No, no so it's kind of similar um, idea to Scran, but specifically for Glasgow. So it was uh, Glasgow museums and libraries and archives all kind of clubbed together and started putting um, their digitised collections online. Um, you'll find a lot of the images in the Glasgow story. You'd also be able to find in Scran, but not all of it. The other advantage with the Glasgow story is they commissioned um, uh, some people to write, or researchers and academics and historians to write um, a little bit about the history to go along with it. And it's really, really good quality. So um starts with, very early history and then works its way through Second City of the Empire and into the kind of modern period. Click on here, um, then you kind of get a page with a general background. And then if you want to get a bit deeper into it, um, so click on neighbourhoods, for instance, where you want to really find out about Pollock particularly, then there'll be little bits of, they're like little essays. Um, and they're really good. Uh, similarly, uh, if you want to create a, an account, you can start saving your favourite images and stuff um, in a photo album. Just helps kind of keep everything together. Um, so if I go, if I type in Hogan Field, let's see. Again. Oh, nothing coming up. Like, I'm going to try just Hogan oh. Field on its own. Uh -huh. Okay, so if I just type Hogginfield, it comes up. Um, oh, and if I now click on, so I'm going to click on Robert Walker because I don't know who he is. <laughs> so he was merchant and magistrate of Letham Hill near Hogginfield. Yeah, yeah. So, and you yeah. get a little bit of information there. And again, like, see the descriptions for the items in their collection are really good, they're really well done. Um, and then you can see here's the keywords down the bottom. So those are those kind of search terms that you would yeah. that you would use that are associated with that um, particular item, whether it's a person or an object or whatever. So, um, so he was a justice of the peace and a merchant, whatever. So he's been tagged that way. If I if I click on merchants, then you'll get oh god, I lots of photographs next page there'll be tons for this so lots of adverts as well these are all from the post office directories i think yeah. um so if i click through right i'll click through that one there and you can see it's an advertisement from the post office Glasgow directory etc etc it tells you where the originals held in the metro uh -huh. library um and then if i view larger image then you get really good quality images on the glasgow story site oh i um, and if you want to, if you want to save, if you want to save them, um, when you open that up into the bigger page, just right click uh, with your mouse, with your mouse, your mouse, and then <laughs> click, save, <laughs> click save image as, and that'll save it to your desktop. That's, That's another fantastic site. Um, again, it's quite old now. Uh, it's early two thousands, but um, they were quite far sighted. And they, when they were digitizing their collections, they they did really high resolution, high quality copies, and made them publicly available. This site is completely free. You don't you don't need to um, pay anything for this site. 
it's really great. Um, and the, the essays and the descriptions are well worth a good look as well. Yeah, I know. So that is the Glasgow story. And finally, uh, we'll just have a quick look at the virtual Mitchell. Because it's, again, quite, <laughs> quite an antiquated site. So this is this was the Mitchell Library's uh, attempt at right. getting their collections online. Um, and I, this site does look very old now. But again, at the time, it was kind of really cutting edge. And Glasgow was, um, was really far ahead of a lot of other museums and archives in terms of getting their, their collections made publicly available, like on the internet. So the Virtual Mitchell, again, you can just do a general keyword search up the top, or you can search oh. for images by area. So since we're on a Hogganfield, uh, you don't see Hogganfield in the area search, what would it be under? Uh, Easter uh, House, maybe? No, 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 yes. no, Gathamlock, maybe? Gathamlock, yeah. So if I click on... No, that's further on. Oh, that is further on. Well, yeah, well, just... So there's... Um, I'm thinking there's of Bishop's Lock. Hi. So there's Gathamlock. Um... And again, you can click on a on a bigger uh, bigger image there. Um, um, what about the seven locks? Seven locks. Which is so, that? That's the park. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, you wouldn't get seven locks in the Mitch. Like if you were to type in seven locks, it wouldn't come up no. because seven locks wasn't a thing when that was right when that site was built. Um, but you could do. I'm trying to think. Uh, I wonder if they would have anything under locks. No. So they do have downside here. You can see there's an area search. You can do a street search. So uh, give me a street name. Uh, Abercrombie Street. Abercrombie Street. Okay. So you've got oh, just one image available there, but you know, oh. oh. That's annoying. Okay. Uh, wow. that, that is the, the Abercrombie Street home. But not a lot of information, really. I mean, the Virtual oh. Mitchell site is, is mostly useful to see what they've got in their collections with a view to maybe going right. or ordering up from them. But yeah, it's, it's, it tends to come quite far down my list in terms of uh, when I, if I'm researching something. So it's usually if I can't find it anywhere else, I'll have a quick look at the virtual Mitchell. Um, but it's still, it's still kind of useful. So um, that's a very quick run through four of the kind of sites I use most uh, in terms of kind of image searches. Um, if you is there anything that you're particularly interested in or been looking to research or looking for information about and not sure where to start? Well, I'd like to look at a lot of things, but I don't I don't know where to start. Honestly. There's not nothing nothing specific. No, it just ends up being um whatever I I, information oh. trail I happen to be yeah. going down the <laughs> rabbit hole with. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's fine. And there's no there's no harm in that either. I mean, I think increasingly as well, um, you'll see historic images appearing on um, you know, Facebook groups and Twitter and social media and stuff. I think particularly Facebook, you see a lot of stuff. Um, and uh -huh. some of some of it has been um maybe taken from Scran or from um from the Glasgow story or whatever. So if you're on Lost Glasgow, for instance, that's just constantly feeding stuff that's on the Glasgow story, for instance. Um, but you'll also get people posting, you know, their own photos and stuff. Um, Can you go to your guile sheet just to see what that was like in the old days, please? Hi. There'll be tons of stuff for our guile sheet. Uh, here we go. Yeah, it's yeah. I hate Argyle Street now. I remember <laughs> yeah. it when I was a kid and it was a 
so busy and so so many good I, shops. It's not looking as good. I mean, Stocky nah. Hall Street's looking really grim at the moment. To say uh-huh. it. Nah, that's so, what we you can see there's 300 items for uh-huh. um for our Gale Street there. Um, and it naturally wants to put like give you eight thumbnails at a time. You can change that. Um, if it's easy, so I'm gonna put in a hundred there. Uh-huh. You'll, you'll start to see them coming up. So wow. Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff. There's not images available for everything. Um, so that's that's just to let you know that there is a photograph in their collection of uh-huh. 132 to 198 Argyle Street in 1930, but they don't have a thumbnail of it. Whereas, oh, wow. uh, try and find one that does. What? Oh, there we go. Ooh, that's nice. What is that? So, 133 Argyle Street, 1936. Uh, and that's a tailor's shop. So, I'm just going to open it. It looks really properly Art Deco, doesn't it? Uh huh. Ah, come on. Oh. Hey, look at that. Oh, so is. That's I'm a just shirt. trying to picture where that is. So, you could. So What's the street? Part, it's Argyle Street, so it's 133. Argyle no, that street. one, the, the side street there. I can't even see that name. It says, I think it's St. Enoch Wind, which might not be there anymore. So if I was looking for this shop front, I right. would do a really quick Google to see where it is today. So if I go 133 uh-huh. Argyle Street. <clears throat> ah, so generally, You'd see it and you'd be like, oh, okay, right, that's grand. So uh, that's just along from Buchanan Street and kind of, uh, yeah, There's right, a right H&M's. I, yeah, and opposite Sloan's. But from 133, we can't, we don't know at the moment um, which side of the road it's on. So I would probably. I know, that's what I'm thinking. I would then because... go to the National Library of Scotland. Right. And go to maps. So, and I know it's nineteen thirties. So I'm gonna go and look at the georeferenced maps here. Get rid of that. Now, please zoom in. No. And. Uh, da, 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 da. Now, the one that I would use, an awful lot of them. So, <clears throat> the OS 1 to 1, 2, 5, uh, 1 to 12, 50, or 1 to 2, 500. So, that's gonna, that's really detailed maps. Um, right. 1944 to 1971. Was it no 1938? I, that's as close as we're going to get. Um, in terms of the oh, detail that right, we need. Uh, yeah, um, so uh, this is um, this is called the National Grid Edition, and um, it's it's pretty decent in terms of detail. So if I zoom in here, and we were so there's Buchanan Street, right? And if I zoom in here, handily, so they've got the numbers here. You right. See that's. 41 to 34. Uh, it looks like the other side of the road here is um is all even numbers. So I would say it's the next side it's, it's still up there. I it's yeah. probably probably this one here. And I think that St. Enoch Wind is probably in there. Looks about right oh, to me. Um so so you could look at that, and that would give you that would give you a rough idea. And then um, trying to think whether we would get a post office directly would probably be the next step. So you'd get all the business listings and stuff through that. That looks quite nice, yeah. actually, for that day and age. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. All oh, things looked so much nicer back then. I think. Oh. <laughs> uh. 
Yeah, I I think the the Art Deco stuff's lovely though. It's really beautiful. Um, you can see all that that chrome gleaming. Yeah. Um, so now let me think. I'm just gonna have a quick look. Post office directory. I can't remember how late ago. This date. Yeah, so you could start digging into that then. Uh, well, you're just trying to get us into trouble, aren't you? Uh, yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> I just, I just wanted you to see a kind of like, like, oh, there's, no, something, there's something that's grabbed your attention. It's like, and it's like down the line, find, there's me yeah. emerging for the flat. Has yeah. ever been on Castaway? Yeah, exactly. Maybe like all peely wally and. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm with Valley, no. Uh, update. Yeah, so again, we'll we'll talk a bit about the post office directories next time, but that would be probably our next stop then. I'm just trying to think how late they go, the ones that are online. But anyway, um so that's that's like five to two now. So um Five to three. Five to three. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, okay. I know I was like I'm confusing you. Right, I'll um I'll I'll stop recording now.